when I first had my stroke, I asked my neurologist. I gave um, her an analogy. I said, it's like I feel like I'm driving to my grandmom's house. Shout out to Wilson. And it feels like when I get there, the house is gone. Like I'm on East Street and the block has been leveled. There's a little piece of uh, the playground that was across the street. But grandmom's house is gone. And it's like the GPS mapping in my brain. We all do this with where all of our information is. Is the map wrong? Or was grandmom's house leveled? Like, was I, was my brain taking me to the right place? Or where was I, did I get to the right place and it just wasn't there? She absolutely got my analogy. And she was like, yeah, grandma's house is gone. It's been an avalanche. You have to rebuild it. So I intentionally got up got on with the business of intentionally trying to relearn what she was describing to me was neuroplasticity the relearning and the rewiring of information it also allowed me the space to not be so embarrassed or angry at all the things I all of a sudden didn't know we're talking about neuroplasticity let's get it Welcome to Brain Friends, where two neuro nerds talk all things aphasia, language recovery, culture, and community. I am Dr. Detrina Celeste Gatson, a clinical speech language pathologist and neuroscientist. And I am Angie Cawthorn, stroke survivor and aphasia advocate. Welcome to our show. Welcome to Brain Friends. We want to thank all of our listeners for downloading the podcast. We appreciate everyone listening. So please tell a friend to tell a friend that we are here. And we are. Hey, Angie. Hey, Dr. Celeste. What's going on with you? How are you? I am doing fantastic. Doing great. How are you? I'm doing so good, and I am so excited that that today we are talking about neuroplasticity. I am here for it. I saw a meme, and just going to ask you this real quick. It said, let me get this right. If a part, if you have brain damage, that part of your brain is dead. It's not coming back, but what you can have is neuroplasticity. And that'll go around the part of your brain that is dead. But what's dead ain't coming back. Is that true? Yes, Angie, that's that is true. And so when we think about neuroplasticity, it's the brain's ability to form new connections and pathways. And so there is growth and reorganization, rewiring, essentially, that occurs because of the damaged tissue. That was that's now damaged. Hmm. So it's like um, forming new roads. Yeah, forming new new roads and new connections. It's kind of like the analogy sometimes we use is that when you have brain damage and that tissue is killed, um, that a detour occurs. And so essentially the brain plasticity is where the detour is happening. It's the basis of learning and that's how the brain will repair itself after the injury. It becomes adaptable like plastic. So it's going to have a detour, go a different way to strengthen those connections or form new connections. How long does it take for new um uh co- connections to be effective like to like come online like if i have a uh, if a person had a stroke today and does it start kind of getting better like something's happening immediately or does it take a while for the brain to kind of come online in that way 
Yeah, well, everybody is different, but I think that the key things to to really grab hold of with the neuroplasticity is that the more repetition and the more you do something, the stronger those new connections um, and pathways perform. And so the more you do something, the stronger it is. And so mm-hmm. um, sleep is really important as well because sleep can help those connections form. Exactly. Exactly. Because sleeping is important. I love a good nap. I slept a lot when I first had my stroke. Um, I couldn't help it, actually. My um, my battery was just, I was drained all the time. I was exhausted all the time. And uh, the doctors actually con- told me to um, to sleep as much as possible. And, you know, uh, didn't put me on bed rest, but they didn't have to because when you have a stroke, your body's trying to, I guess, realign itself and it you you need rest in order for that to happen, for that neuroplasticity to take place. Right, right. And the, the other key thing about neuroplasticity is that it's activity driven. And so that's where, you know, that phrase of use it or lose it comes into play. And so the more you're able to create frequency um, in an activity or intensity in an activity, the more you really are strengthening those new connections or forming new connections. Okay. So I was right to play Madden and 2K after my stroke because it helped me strengthen my hand and eye coordination. Yes. So, so exactly. So shout out to EA Sports. Y'all should be sponsors. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we can, where y'all at? I'm trying to help y'all out. I All I do it. is shout these cats out. Anyway, but no, I think I, I and it's, um, amazing to me how much um I couldn't absorb then that I look back on a game that I did play and I'm like I didn't even know the man could do that but I because I couldn't deal with all the things that it allows you to do but what I could do was just focus on my hand and my coordination with the game and I think it really did help a lot um you know with uh my coordination yeah absolutely well let me ask you another question with people with aphasia. How can we use neuroplasticity to improve our communication? Is there a way that it can be, I, 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 there's no other way to ask that. How can people with neuroplast? how can we use neuroplasticity to improve our communication? That's a good question, Angie. So when we think about neuroplasticity, um, ways to promote brain plasticity depends on the experience you have. Um, and experiences really help prime the brain and shape the brain. And so by that, I mean, um, either in your routine, making sure that the experiences and the actions that you have created within your um, routine are positive, are healthy, um, and those types of things help prime prime the brain. Um, other ways you could do it is repeating an activity. Hmm. Repeating an activity, like editing a podcast. Like, okay. Ooh. Like editing a podcast. Come on, uh, editor. Right. Yes. Come on, that's, editor. That's you. That's you. Is it? Is it yeah. Cool? And so even in that, when when I say repeating an activity, either, you know, if it's something that you used to do and you're not able to do as well anymore, the more you repeat that activity and try to perform that activity, that can help uh, create those new pathways or Mm. strengthen those pathways that are dead. Um, In your case, one of the things that you're doing that makes it so awesome by editing the podcast is you're creating new connections because you're doing something new. And the more you do it, the stronger those connections get. Wow. And so when I was doing... mm, reclaiming my spot at church that was the stuff that was 
the things that I used to do that I'm trying to get back and get better at. And that's a different type of connection versus me doing something new. And it's also new. Inf- inf- it's always a new episode that I'm editing. Like I'm not re-editing episode two. It's always new. So I'm always getting new pathways or those pathways that are being worked out are being strengthened because I'm kind of, I'm digging in as it were. Right. Right. Cause if you, cause if you think about it, even how you were saying, you know, doing new things versus doing the things that you used to do. um, It's kind of like, even with the word or saying a word, if you have a word in your vocabulary and because of aphasia, that pathway to that word is dead. The more you use different strategies to get to that word, the quicker you might be able to retrieve that word. Let me break down what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. So if you are trying to describe, you know, church, for an example, um, and you start by saying, you know, you may usually go there on Sunday, it's a building, people of faith go there, and you're describing that word. Mm -hmm. um, It's helping to Pastor create or something like that. There you go. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You're naming these other words that are associated with it. You're helping to your brain recarve out a quick way to get to the word church. Well, let me ask you this. When I did do that without um it wasn't an option to have to talk around the word because the word I wanted wasn't an option. I'm going to back out of that question because I don't even know how to ask it. Okay. Um, Well, one thing we do need to do, we need to work on this icebreaker. We ain't do no icebreakers. We just out here. Look, honey, we even got in and got got straight to talking about neuroplasticity and all the things. Ain't had no garnish. We just out here Eating all the all the entree, no appetizers, nothing. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do a delayed recall of three words. Okay, and that works by you and I give each other three words. We're gonna wait five minutes and then see if we can recall those words. Yes. Okay. I will get a timer. You got my words ready? I got your words ready. You got, you ready? Your three words are frog, tea, pillow. Frog, tea, and pillow. Yes. Okay. Your three words are jacket, compassion, point. Jacken, I'm sorry, jacket, Mm -hmm. compassion, and what was the last one? Point. Point. Okay. Jacket, compassion, point. Yep. Okay. Clock is going. Okay. So can neuroplasticity be measured or quantified? Like, is there a way to, is there a way to measure how much better you're doing? Yeah. So when we think about temporary or short term um, memory types of ways that neuroplasticity is quantified, those changes are more synaptic changes where when we think about long lasting changes and those are going to be more structural new connections that are happening. And so that's why it's important to like I said, I feel like I'm a, a, I keep saying the same thing, but it's really, really important to repeat a behavior because that's what can help we rewire and make those connections stronger. So it's practice, practice. And then when you're done with that, practice some more. Right. Just keep yeah. uh, digging the well and just keep digging the well. Just keep going. Okay. Yeah, because plasticity is not limited in age. And so I think that that's why the idea that the client can continue to get better is so important 
because of that plasticity. But it also means that you might not get the best plasticity changes based off of what you do in therapy alone. Mm. And that's where home exercise programs and practicing at home is really important to strengthening whatever new types of connections or information is given at the therapy level. Like doing your homework. Honey, you you got to do that homework. You got to do that homework. Like you just can't just show up at the office. Sometimes you got to put in that work at the house. Yes. It's important. You have to, it's the extra work you put in is where you're going to make your gains. You know, I did a lot of work with, um, you know, with the research and it's made a huge difference in my rate of speed and my uh, speaking, talking is good, better than it was without it. It was, it was actually pretty terrible without it, but um, you know, everybody's different. And I had two small strokes, relatively small to like, you know, it wasn't like I didn't lose consciousness or anything when I say when I say it was small. But yeah, I think the neuroplasticity part is the only part that matters because that's where your healing comes from. Right. That's where getting better is that's where that's where it all stems from. But what kind of gets me is that it was never really talked about. It's it's like go to therapy. Um and I remember they used to say they used to be like six months and whatever you didn't get back, you weren't going to get anything back. But that's not true. That's um, just a horrible myth that right. kind of pushed out there. But um, you have to keep going. Yeah. And I think some of that, too, is just knowledge and understanding. So there is what what we call a spontaneous recovery period. And so sometimes I think that people get mixed up or don't have the clear understanding of you know, you have the spontaneous recovery period, which means after that injury, why stroke, I mean, why sleep and therapy is so important because the brain will do some of its own recovering. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, after that three to six month period, that's where the plasticity will continue to go. But you really have to step it up and make sure that you're doing those things to mm-hmm. support repetition and intensity you know i love a good analogy so it's like if you've got um uh a weight reduction surgery you still have to do to keep it with diet and exercise Mm -hmm. you have to continue to put that work in and put that work in you gotta put that work in guys right right or even even if you're you know even without the weight reduction if you trying to build muscle in the gym right you can't just go and lift the weights two times a week for 60 minutes and right. expect to see that muscle is going to take what you're doing at home like the diet and the continued weight lifting oh, so that's why it's not working for me uh-oh so i just learned something uh, listen i gotta get it together that's what i heard with my little two i come on bill my trainer <laughs> no uh-oh i didn't i I ain't doing what, so I shouldn't make this pie tonight. That's Look, what, that's what uh, I'm here. You didn't bring, pie. you didn't bring me. I, I knew I was going to get a pie. Let me, let me give you my three words before I forget. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> I've you, been holding these words in my head. All right. Yeah, you go. Okay. Um, my three words were. C. Um, point compassion wow point compassion and that thing from Ghana coat jacket 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 compassion and point yes (laughs) yes yes Yes. um what are your three words Frog. Frog. And, um, or Kermit? Frog. Um, you're right, frog. Okay. Pillow. Pillow. That ain't three? No, that's just frog and pillow. 
Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, I got nothing. I'm... Something you drink. Tea? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, you, you know, mm-hmm. you, you're drinking it right in front of me. Like, that's... <laughs> pay attention, Ange. Like, don't... <laughs> Listen, come on, man. This thing that I'm drinking that has steam coming from it. Yes, like steam on your face and it's brown. It's tea. It ain't coffee. But yeah, that is, I did pretty good. I mean, I think we both kind of had a, I mean, two out of three. Okay. What? And I had two strokes. You better leave me alone. (laughs) Do the best I can out here. So that delayed memory recall, there are different strategies that, you know, we use in order to support our memory, which is one of the strategies that I used with that, even though I only remember two out of three, was to associate it with something. And so two of the items, yeah, I just had, but the last one I I couldn't get. So I appreciate, I appreciate the, uh, the tip, even though, I mean, I do see the jacket right behind me. Yeah, it, do. Yeah, it is. Listen, listen. I I said hello to the jacket because the jacket needs to be recognized and honored. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is everything. You walked into that conference and owned the room. You just owned the room and brought so much light the vibration was on tilt, on tilt. And when people don't want to leave, that's a great thing. That's a great, that's a great thing. That is an awesome thing. Well, let me ask you, I know I'm like, let me ask you another silly question. Um, They don't say there's no such thing as a silly question. You know, I was about to, but I I didn't want you to edit out my comment. I will, because there is silly questions. But what, what's, What can people with aphasia do specifically to increase their own neuroplasticity? Is there anything specific that they can do um, to kind of foster um, bringing along neuroplasticity? Yeah, so I think there are a couple of things. One is to definitely keep your brain busy and healthy. And when I say busy, I I don't mean be a busy body. Okay, okay. (laughs) <laughs> okay just i mean all up in everybody's stuff right i mean doing things that create that that call for mental exchange mental interaction um and so what that doesn't mean is just sitting and watching tv because that right. could be a very passive type of activity but things like um either playing cards or puzzles or art music exercise Mm -hmm. uh there's some research out that shows cross crawl exercises um exercises to where you'll take one part of your body to cross over to the other side so like if you're like what talk to me so like if you take your right arm and touch your left leg all right first of all i don't have any my jewelry on that's what tells me my right from my left so all right so my right hand Okay, what do you want me to do? And touch your and touch your left leg. Okay. Yeah, so that type those types of exercises are called cross crawl exercises and they they integrate both hemispheres of the brain um by strengthening the network and communication of the corpus callosum. Oh. Okay. So those okay. are just different types of you know, if you, something specific that you, that you can do, but I do have some brain exercises for neuroplasticity that I pulled for us to do together. Oh, okay. How much, what are we looking like on time? We have some time. We have about seven minutes. All right. So we'll do those. And I did have another question for you. I am, you well, so with me doing the editing for the podcast I notice it's become easier um like I remember more than I did and it's becoming a little bit easier for me and that's the neuroplasticity right right exactly so be- in the beginning you know it might have been a little easier as you went back to it 
because it was those short synapses and connections that were being formed. And now what's happening because of the repetition and the frequency that you're doing it, those long lasting um, new connections are now forming. And that's why it's easier um, for you. And then you see, I get excited. And then, you know, even when you try something new with it, rather you're editing out something that, you know, one of something us should have said or a curse word or what, what, something <laughs> whatever Angie said. <laughs> um, or adding something that's when it might be a shorter connection because it's newer, but once it's getting easier, then that's a great sign that those long-term connections are happening. Okay. Because I was, I, when I use like different tracks or I want to do something different, it's um, becoming easier for me. And it's and then the funny thing is, and then Audacity actually changed the platform look of their app. So after I got all used to it, they threw me a little and I was like, uh oh, but I still, you know, still got to plug through. But, yeah, they changed the entire interface. And I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> but it's good because, you know, it's not that different. But it's different enough that it makes me think a little bit more. And um, it's a little more tiring. Yeah, but I do feel that it's um, a great exercise. And everybody should have, you should always have an exercise, even if it's just a word search or something like that. Uh, playing cards, Uno, um, of course, 2K, Xbox, get at me. But whatever, you should have something that really does help with those connections. That part. That part. <laughs> okay. But I want to do, I want to do the thing. Go, go, go. Okay. So the first exercise is make two fists with hands facing you. Okay. Extend your left thumb Got and it. your right pinky. To the left. Okay. Now switch back and forth. That's that's not I'm that's I don't know what's going on. My middle finger won't go down. How do I wave? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh put your middle finger down. It's <laughs> right, right. It's, I'm out here just being inappropriate. Your left, your left thumb. Left thumb. Let's and your right pinky. Right. Okay. Now switch See, back and forth. And I'm already messing it up. Right? Me too. Yeah, it's not happening. Right? Okay. Okay, let's okay. do another one. Okay. The other one is tri it's called triangle and circle. Mm -hmm. So draw a circle in the air with your left hand. Okay. Draw a triangle with your right hand. That's Same time. <laughs> I'm making, all I'm doing is octagons. <laughs> <laughs> I am giving you oct all, all of the octagons. Everybody's getting an octagon. Oh my gosh. So those are the exercises? Those are two brain neuroplasticity exercises. Um, okay. Okay. All to right. do at your your own leisure. At, do at your leisure. <laughs> so, But playing like spades would be good for neuroplasticity. That's what I'm hearing. I'm, th I'm hearing cutting that book. Look. Uh, yes. Yes. So that type of activity um, would be great. Learning a new language okay. is always great or learning a new like activity. So if you, you know, if you, if you have a sport that you haven't played before, whether it's golf or I don't know, tennis, you know basketball. what you want to do. Right. 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 Whatever you enjoy or you think you might enjoy, try it. Right. Right, right. You right. think you might enjoy cooking, then start cooking. Doing, get, right. Get even, recipes. even that type of stuff. And so I think the thing that's really important, especially as your brain is recovering, is that 
especially because with people with aphasia or um, anytime you're in a rehabilitation space is that you used to be able to do it. So at one point, those connections have been formed. And so, you know, part of it is either doing it more and doing it often so you can reform those connections and help your brain create a detour or form new connections by doing new things. Like when I couldn't tie my shoe and now I can actually tie my shoe, but I couldn't tie my shoe. um, And I just had to keep trying. And that was the rewiring that you were having to rewire. Yeah. And that's the part that you get. um, That's the discouraging part. That's the part that if I can tell and inspire somebody, push through, just keep trying, just keep trying, just push through. And it does get better because who tied their shoe this morning? I did. Okay, come on. Come on, shoe. <laughs> now, that, be- <laughs> that, be- that being said, I did wear the wrong size shoe after my stroke. Um, uh, we went to the store and got me some shoes. And I wound up wearing, uh, first of all, I wear a size 8. I picked up a size 11. Oh, and I wore a size 11. I didn't realize it, but they were slide in shoes and I thought they were the most comfortable things. Yeah, well, because they're a size 11. <laughs> Did you have feet swelling? No. Oh, you were just you were just walking around with big shoes on. I had no idea. And then I went to go um, to go replace them. They said, what size, what size shoe do you have on? I'm like 11. I don't wear no 11. But um, but because now, you know, nowadays nobody measures your shoe. You go in, you find your shoe, you go up to the register, you pay for it. I but because I was so out of, you know, I'd had a stroke. And like I said, you don't know what you don't know until you go to reach for a size eight. You pick up an 11 and wear it for six months (laughs) and don't even know that you're wearing the wrong size shoe. Wow. (laughs) Listen. It was the most comfortable shoe I've ever had. So maybe I need to be <laughs> stop pretending like I wear an eight and recognize that maybe, maybe I am a nun and I <laughs> at a minimum. Let them toes breathe. <laughs> that. I don't even know. But yeah, so neuroplasticity. Is there anything else that you want to share about neuroplasticity that I did not ask you that I need to know? That the people, what the people need to know now, <laughs> what they need to know, Dr. Celeste. Um, I think I got it all. I, the, the biggest thing is just that plasticity is not limited in age. I think I said that. And the more you repeat and direct your attention toward a thing, that activity can be we uh, rewired yeah, neuroplasticity changes happen all the time, but the magnitude depends on how much activity the brain receives. Making new connections, getting new routes to get places in the brain, rewiring that Google Maps in your brain, mm-hmm. even turning the Google Maps off in the car helps. Yes, yeah. You now that's a tip that I have. I mean, definitely for all individuals in building neuroplasticity, which is turn off your GPS sometimes. Mm-hmm. Use your brain to help recall where to go. Right, right. Because you have to um, use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. Stay up on these things and don't take it for granted because the stronger those connections are, I well, I should ask the question. I shouldn't just assume the stronger the connections are from before onset uh, might be a precursor to how well you do after stroke or is that now? Ooh, that's good. Um, So what some of the research has shown in regards to that is that, you know, we all, we all have, I always use this analogy that, if you take care of yourself now, how basically how you take care of yourself is how you age. So if you're, you know, in your 30s, 40s, you're taking care of yourself versus the individual that's not taking care of their self, you already start at a lower position when you're mm-hmm. not taking care of yourself. And then you have a lifetime event happen, whether it is a stroke, traumatic brain injury, dementia, whatever, heart attack, whatever, and you drop. 
Okay, that right. functioning level drops. And so if you're already using healthy behaviors and healthy habits, then your brain is a little healthier at onset. And so there may be some stronger plasticity there uh, because your brain is already primed for some of those experiences. And so definitely it's so important to have those healthy behaviors and habits, even without injury. Okay. And that's like what you eat, what you put in your body, the health care that you're getting. Um, and you said uh, previous times, if you're not happy with your care team, switch them. Yeah. Get new ones. The stress, all of the, you know, of course, stress is something that we have. But I think the more that you're able to find ways to de-stress, to um, whether it's meditation, whether it's yoga, rather, you know, whatever your behavior is that is healthy. Right, right, exactly. Can be supportive. <laughs> Not with you. Look, we have, it's time to go. It's time to go. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Tell a friend, share this episode. It's so important. If you've had somebody who's, um, needs uh the good word on neuroplasticity they've had a brain injury they were in an accident something like that share the episode with them <laughs> why are you laughing why are you laughing i feel like that was like the church laugh that you know you, like i'm trying not to laugh but because i know i'm gonna get popped if i laugh out loud in church <laughs> but i can't right. hold it in um i just love our time together <laughs> We the best. I love it. We brain friends. Brain friends. Thank you guys for listening. Bye. Peace out.